baby, we just gonna go right into this review and we're gonna say let's haul out the mess. Um, I'm giving haul out the Holly lit up. Uh, I'm giving it a five out of 10, which is generally a higher scoring, I think, than when I gave the original haul out the Holly. And let me tell you why. So far, this countdown to Christmas season, the worst movie I've seen has never been Chris. I actually was able to get through this second haul out the Holly without wanting to drink a bottle of wine, like without wanting to take it straight to my head. Um, I think these haul out the Holly movies are ludicrous. I think they're silly. I'm giving it a five out of 10 saying it's not real. It's not worth watching, but it's not the worst thing I've seen this season. I read a lot of comments on the Hallmark Facebook page and a lot of people said they were getting anxiety from watching this movie. And I was like, what the hell gave them anxiety? And then I tuned in. I didn't get anxiety, but I just thought it was that terrible slack, slapstick comedy. It is that thing that I think Lacey is much better than. She has better range than this. And by far, this was the most disappointing movie of Merry Thanksgiving weekend or Merry Thanksgiving week, however you want to say. And I was dreading watching it, but I got up like super early Sunday morning and was like, hey, let me just get this out the way before I want to like gouge my eyes out. Um, I don't want to see a haul out the Holly uh, third installation of this movie. I don't see what about a HOA actually says Christmas. I don't know who in the actually came up with this idea. I really actually want to curse, but you guys know how I ripped the first one apart and talked about how HOAs are actually very discriminatory. There's lots of lawsuits against them. You know, they trying to keep black and brown people to move out of certain neighborhoods and they're doing that through the HOA. That's one of the reasons. So I already ripped the original one to shreds. I'm not even going to go there, but I will say, and Megan and I did notice that y'all had um, three black folks who had no speaking parts, but three black folks that were part of this neighborhood. So you must have like watched my reviews and at least said, we can't have this all white neighborhood, this HOA. And then Megan brought up the point of everyone in this neighborhood being forced to celebrate Christmas, <coughs> but people may celebrate Kwanzaa, they may celebrate Hanukkah. Um, what, what in the hell? Okay, I need a second. Baby, haul out the hollies making me cough. So, the fact that if you live in this neighborhood, you are forced to celebrate Christmas is just outrageous. Hallmark, I am going to make a plea to you. Do not make another one of these movies. Lacey, if you want to become another Candace Cameron Bure, where your movies only do well because of your name and not because of your acting, then keep this shit up. Just keep it up. Because it's disappointing to your viewers. It's very low class. It's not funny. Um, you gave a bunch of people anxiety. I wasn't one of them. But why are you doing this? You're better than this. And as a matter of fact, I already said in my review of A Built More Christmas, that should have been the 8 p.m. Saturday movie. You did not deserve that time slot. They should have left you for Sunday. And we could have gotten to you when we gotten to you. So you and Wes Brown need to get your shit together because this was not great. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of his anyway, but this was just, I'm tired of telling you that you're doing subpar work. Um, and you're doing this slapstick comedy and you're not even doing it in a way where it's theater. Baby, go over to Italia Ricci and Luke McFarlane if you want to see how you can do comedy and make people laugh without making people physically freaking ill because that's what you've been doing. All right, let me get into the premise of this movie because some of y'all like this or some of y'all might want to know why I hate it so much. We're back on Evergreen Lane. We see that Emily's living in her parents' house. She's now dating Jared, played by Wes Brown. And it's almost Christmas time and they're in their normal HOA activities about how to, um, how they're going to spend Christmas, the different events that they're going to have and everybody in their little neighborhood needs to do it. Okay, they now find out they're getting new neighbors, the Jolly Johnsons. The Jolly Johnsons are a husband and wife with a little boy. They were reality TV winners and they show up in the neighborhood. Everybody automatically thinks they're going to be a great addition, but instead they end up being bullies, snobs. 
their whole focus is on competition and winning and they actually get Ned to who is on the HOA board to support a lot of their antics. So we watched the Jolly Johnsons bully people in the neighborhood. They was mostly bullying other white people, thank God. Thank God the non-speaking parts, black people were just minding their business somewhere else in the neighborhood. But we watch a lot of bullying go on and it's supposed to be competitive, fun behavior, but it's actually pretty nasty behavior for Christmas. Um, Hallmark, I, this didn't say Christmas to me, this didn't say love. So anyway, Emily and Jared are trying to figure out how they can take back the neighborhood. Um, she calls in her parents from Florida and they try to tell her it's war. We need to get Christmas back from the Jolly Johnsons. We need to get our neighborhood back. And maybe this whole thing was a GD mess. The only reason why it's getting a five out of 10 is so far my lowest scoring this season was Never Been Chris, which it deserved the four out of 10. Matter of fact, it deserved like a one out of 10 is what it really did. But because I liked Tyler Hines, I definitely like gave it a couple points because I understand that he can do better than this, right? I technically would love to rate these terrible movies like Haul Out the Holly and Never Been Chris. I really want to give them like a negative scoring. I don't even want to score them on 10. I think it's an insult to our intelligence. I think for those of us that are diehard Hallmarkies and we're watching every movie that you premiere, especially this Christmas season, all this stuff and this slapstick comedy, it's disrespectful, it's borderline discriminatory, and it's really sending a bad message to our children. Um, I thought we were supposed to be celebrating Christmas and showing people that there's many different ways to uh, enjoy the Christmas spirit. And I just don't think HOA Wars is really like the way to go. So I didn't like this movie, five out of 10. Skip it unless you're into slapstick comedy. Um, Lacey, Chabert, Wes Brown. Honestly, get your shit together. I, like, guys, I gotta say at least one semi-curse word. Like, this was trash. This was absolute trash. Megan only got 30 minutes in. I always watch the movies to the end because unless I am so physically ill, like a royal Christmas crush, I made it to the very last 10 minutes and I said, F it, I don't care how these people get together because I can't stand this Nordic a um, accent anymore from Stefan Hozar. Okay, um, Lacey, you're better than this. Wes, I'm not a huge fan, but I've seen you in some other stuff. You're better than this. Please don't let them sign you up for this crap. Please don't think that ratings is, is just what it's about. If you watched a Biltmore Christmas, which I hope you did tune into, being a Hallmark actor, you should really want to showcase that you can do so much more. Lacey, you've definitely been on the big screen before with like Mean Girls, um, and you can do so much more than that. But if you keep pushing out this shit and this crap, we're really going to stop supporting you. And baby... I think Bethany Joy Lenz should actually be the person that should be the queen of Hallmark now since CCB left. It actually shouldn't be you, Lacey. You disappointed us. Your last decent Christmas movie was really like the Christmas waltz and even that was okay, um, but not your best. And even your, you know, uh, Merry Scottish Christmas, whatever, it was okay. I gave that an eight out of eight. It was some drama, but there was still some things that needed to be worked on there. That was, of course, a better movie than this. But stop thinking that just your name and your face is going to be enough. Also, one of the hallmarky comments I thought that was funny. Someone said, even though they love Lacey, they never believe in her movies through the kisses that she's actually in love with anybody. And it's true. She's given like these grandma kisses. Baby, you need to see them Andrew Walker kisses. Um, shout out to Andrew Walker's wife once again. He be getting all the way in there and giving them kisses and making you believe he is in love. Even if he's on Christmas Island in front of a damn airplane that can't go nowhere because of a storm. Andrew Walker is going to give you that kiss. Ha! And baby... Christopher Paloha, his kisses were great in a Biltmore Christmas as well. Lacey, the Jesus kisses, we've got to really work on that. If you don't want to be an actress, then just don't do it anymore. But I have to agree with that hallmarky. Megan says she thinks it's because you're deeply religious, but I'm sure there's other people on the, uh, 
other Hallmark actors and actresses that are deeply religious and they are delivering. Lacey, so far you're subpar, get it together. And I'm saying this as a huge fan. All right, guys, I'm out. Haul out the mess. I'm out.